hello you guys hello so in this video guys for bible study i'm not going to be before you guys long but we're going to be coming from ephesians chapter 5 especially verses 15 through 16 in james chapter 1 but we're going to especially look at verse 5 so that's where we're going to be coming from this morning for bible study guys and then for our prayer for this morning um, we're going to be praying Psalms 100. I'm, I'm looking down, so just bear with me. Psalms 128, verse 2, and Psalms 97. Amen. So if you guys want, you guys can go with me in your Bibles. We're going to start with Psalms uh, 128 first. Psalms 128, verse 2. So this is a prayer point for us this morning. Amen, you guys. Glory to God. Pray everyone's weekend was well. Pray you guys are blessed. Amen. I've been keeping you guys in my daily prayers. God is amazing. So Psalms 28 verse 2. I actually want to read verses 1 and 2. And we're going to speak this as a prayer point this morning, guys. Amen. So Psalms 128 verse 1 says, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. This is verse 2. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. So we decree that over our lives this morning as our prayer that we are blessed because we fear the Lord. We are blessed because we reverence the Lord. We are blessed because we choose to walk in the ways of God. Amen. And we decree in the name of Jesus that according to this verse, we will eat the fruit of our labor. I want to encourage someone with that this morning. You got some good rewards coming for you, some good fruit because of your labor. In Jesus' name, amen. So we decree that we will eat the fruit of our labor. Blessings and prosperity will be ours. That is our portion in the name of Jesus Amen. If you are in agreement with that, say amen. And then we're going to come from Psalms 97. I'm going to read it to you guys first. Amen. Well, we're going to revisit that because that is a part of our um, verse for the month of March. But let's let's um, read it first, then we'll declare. Amen. So Psalms 97, the Lord reigns. Sorry, guys, that thing was moving. <laughs> but Psalms 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the people see his glory. All who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast in idols worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and rejoices and the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil. For he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is shed upon the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Yes, rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous and praise his holy name. So we decree and declare that this morning, guys, that God reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Amen. These clouds and thick darkness surround God. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. You got to know that, say that, that's my portion, righteousness and justice because of the God that I serve. Amen. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. Don't worry about any enemies. Don't worry about any haters. Don't worry about any devils because the God that goes before you has you. He has you, right? Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. Glory to God. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains, mountains, guys melt like wax before the lord before the lord of all the earth look at this great glorious grand god that we serve amen the heavens guys proclaim his righteousness and all the people see his glory we can look at this through the natural heavens and the spiritual heavens amen all who worship images are put to shame those who boast in idols worship him all you gods Glory to God. Zion hears and rejoices and the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Don't you know that God is a God of justice and his judgments, you know, are just and righteous and holy and fair. So you got to believe and know that God's judgments are true. God's judgments are holy. They are righteous. 
Amen. For you, O oh Lord, are the most high over all the earth. That's our theme continuing on this month. Supremacy and wisdom and how God is so supreme over every and all, over everything uh, naturally, over everything spiritually. He is supreme. He is the highest ruling authority there is no situation or circumstance or anything that you're going through or have gone through that can top him right guys he is supreme for you O lord are the most high over all the earth you are exalted for above all gods hallelujah and because we love the lord we shall hate evil amen we decree that we're going to continue to cling to god and we are open to what he wants us to be open to and we're not open to what he don't want us to be open to amen it says, let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones. You got to know that your life is guarded in Christ. We're decreeing that this morning and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. So you continue to draw close to God and hate evil and know that your life is in the hands of God. He is guarding your very life because you are faithful to him. You are his chosen. He will deliver you from the hand of the wicked. That means no weapon literally formed against you shall prosper. Not one. Light is shed upon the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Hallelujah. So that's your portion. Light is your portion. Joy is your portion. Amen. We decree that we will rejoice in the Lord because we are righteous and praise his holy name. Amen. To this morning's prayer, guys, if you're in agreement. Amen. So now let's jump into Bible study, guys. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. We're not going to read all of it. We're going to focus in on um, verses 15 through 16. And I'm flipping there now, guys. Glory to God, guys. God is good. So, and we also, guys, we have a James series. We have an Ephesians series. Over the next coming days, guys, some of these Bible places that we are going to be reading from, we're revisiting them because we have a lot of different um, Bible studies on them. But we're reading this morning, um, Ephesians has about 32, 33 verses. We're just going to focus on verses 1 through 21 this morning. I want to read 15 through, six, through um, 16 first. And then we're going to go back and read verses 1 all the way to 21. Okay. So verse 15 of Ephesians 5 says, Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. As you guys go through this week and this month, and just even over your life, be mindful of this verse that, you know, you say to yourself, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to be mindful of how I live, that I'm not going to choose to live unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil the times that we're living in right guys okay so let's go back and read verses we we'll start at verse one and continue on it's talking about wives and husbands it's talking about light and darkness it's talking about being imitators of christ talk about a lot of different things but let's go back um to the beginning so be imitators of god therefore as dearly loved children and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place, like they're out of order, right? but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And then in the footnotes, be says, or kingdom of the Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. I want that to encourage someone this morning. You got to remember who you are in Christ. Amen. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. 
for it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Now, here's where we get into verses 15 through 21. That was verses 1 through 14. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So that is Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 21. And we're going to close with James. James chapter 1. And I'm going there now, guys. And guys, daily, let us, you know, daily, let us say, God, how can I honor you today? How can I become more like you today? How can I spend more time with you today, God? How can I allow my flesh to decrease and my spirit to increase, um, you know, today? You know, what? What can I learn today, God? What what can I do today, God? What do you want me to see about this day? You know, because God doesn't give us any days in vain. He don't want us wasting time. He don't give us time for us to waste time. He don't give us the gifts and talents and treasures that he has given us for us to waste it. What are we doing with the life that we have left? What, 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 you know, what are we doing with God with what God has given us? How have we been a blessing to someone else? What have we learned that we can teach someone else? How has God been a blessing to us through him directly or um, someone else that he used to be a blessing? How can you enhance and equip and help the body of Christ? You know, what are you doing to glorify God and let your light shine? No, none of us are perfect, but that should not be the excuse. Daily, we should be on God's altar. Daily, we should be wanting to grow and learn and um, increase and enlarge it in Christ. Because, guys, eternity is going to be forever. It is never going to end. You know, when you fall, repent and get back up and keep on moving. You know, but look at let's look at the bigger picture continuously, guys, as I've been saying over the years. Let's look at the bigger picture because at the end of the day, the bigger picture is what's going to matter. Okay, guys, so we're going to close with James chapter 1. Then I'll see you guys back on tomorrow, Lord's will. But James 1 is talking about trials and temptations and listening and doing. We're going to actually read all 27 verses. And I want to read verse 5 to you guys. And I want you guys to, you know, meditate on this. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. So if you lack wisdom, you can go to God for wisdom. We've been talking more and more about wisdom this month. We have some other videos talking about wisdom. But this entire month, we've been dedicated to the supremacy of Christ, um, reading about his word and what God is saying with that in wisdom. And we know that real true wisdom is found in Christ. You know, so if you need wisdom on the situation or wisdom with something, you can go to God and talk to him. You can pray. You can ask God to show you. What you need to see. You can ask God to give you wisdom. And he will do that. Amen. So if you lack wisdom. If any of us lack wisdom. We should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to us. Amen. Because we know God don't have. Um, no, There's no favoritism with him. He It says he will give generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. And it is also so important to be open to how God wants to give you what he wants you to have right guys so let's read james chapter one james a servant of god and of the lord jesus christ and also we have a james bible study as well they're all on the playlist but let's keep reading to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations greetings so verses 2 through 18 is talking about trials and temptation guys in 19 through uh 27 is listening and doing so let's talk about trials and temptations this is verse 2 reading on. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith 
develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Amen. And then here's where we get verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. Verse 6, and this is very important, guys. But when he asks, he must, because we know that God wants us to believe and have faith in him, right? He say, but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts, doubt, unbelief, all the different things, right? But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. And there's something like you say, unstable in all his ways. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position. But the one who is rich should take pride in his low position because he will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire, excuse me guys, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. I want to read that again, verse 13 going to um, 14. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin when it is grown, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So God is not going to tempt you. The enemy is going to want to come and tempt you. God will test us. We have talked about this multiple times. He will test us, but he will not tempt us. He will test, but he won't tempt. I want someone to... Um, you know, like if you were like, well, I feel like God is tempting me. God is not tempting you. The devil wants to tempt you. The devil is the tempter in the accuser of the brethren. But God will not tempt. He will test you, though. You will be tested. So there is a difference between just like it's a big difference between um, condemnation and conviction. There is a big difference between being tempted and tested. Right. OK, so don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. So let's close with listening and doing. And we just going to continue, guys. Also, this is on my heart that God um, told me for God to be our daily bread, our daily manna, spiritually and naturally, guys. I encourage you guys, if you're not, I know many of you are, but I encourage you guys, if you're not, to make the Lord's Prayer a part of your prayers, a part of your daily confessions, and live it out, and actually meditate on it upon line by line. Amen, guys. So, and we've talked about that, so I'm going to keep reading, but the Lord's Prayer, God being our daily bread, is one of those um, highlighted, you know, and God wants to be our daily bread. He wants to be our daily manna. He wants to be us to seek him daily in our finances, guys, and in the spiritual realm, physically, with our families and jobs and careers and businesses and situations and ministry as it relates to our souls and physical bodies. All areas of life, our children, our marriages, our spouses, um, you know, anything, he wants us to seek him. He wants us to depend on him. He never wants us to worship the created thing more than we do him you know he give us those blessings but the blessings come from him you know he, he don't want to lose us to those things you know what i mean guys so keep that in the back of your mind and even in front of your mind god is my daily bread he's my source of everything my source of wisdom my source of provision my source of blessing, my source of peace, my source of supply, my source of all good things, 
all the glory belongs to my great God. He's my daily bread. He's my daily manna. Even look at the Israelites when they were in the wilderness and how God provided the quail and the manna for them. Water out of the flinty rocks. They shoes and clothes did not wear out for all them years. You know, my son will be six in a couple months, Lord's will. And he, he grows out of his clothes and shoes every few months. You know, he already tall and you know bill and he big got big feet his feet is bigger than my whole hand and he every what three to six months be buying him more clothes and shoes and it just amazes me how with them israelite children for over 40 years they clothes and shoes did not go out you know and that's you know when god was giving me this to write this down some days back what the daily well more than some days back i want to say like a week or more back with where to come from with the videos and stuff this was one of them with us as a part of the prayer points too the daily bread and manna and how just as he provided for them in the wilderness do you know guys thank you jesus this is a word for somebody that god will meet you where you are he can provide for you where you are where you are does not surprise him if you in the valley place if you in the mountaintop place wherever you are it don't surprise him god knows how to get you to the blessing and he knows how to get the blessing to you but he really want you to grasp that you guys god you are my daily bread you are my daily bread my daily source of provision my daily bread in whatever situation or anything you're thinking about he is your daily bread he is your daily bread. As he sustained them Israelite children, guys. They clothes and shoes didn't wear out. They had the the the, uh, the men and the quail. And even though they did grumble and God said, okay, y'all y'all want it and y'all being ungrateful. Y'all going to eat it for a longer time. And it got to the place to where they started didn't like, didn't liking it and different things. But he provided nonetheless. And let us be grateful. Rather we going through a valley or a mountain. Let us be grateful because you know what, God, I have you. And I know, God, that you are guiding me to great places. If you are in a low place today, God is going to guide you to a greater place as you continue to trust him and let him lead. If you are in a great place today, God got an even greater place than that for you. Amen, you guys. So, glory to God. So, let me, um, I'm going to go back up and read that. Cause that really, glory to God. So, don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Who does not change like shift and shadow. So God don't change and switch up. He don't change and switch up. He is almighty God. He is the ancient of days. His El Shaddai. He is the same from yesterday, today, and forevermore, guys. Don't you love that about God? That God ain't like some people? He don't switch up. I love that about him. You can always trust and depend on him. Mm. So he chose to give us birth through the word of truth. That we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. And let's close with listening and doing. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. I love the word of God and I love making it practical because I tell you this scripture and, and these chapters and these different places in the Bible have been such a blessing to me um, over the years of my life and daily is blessing me daily I try to you know live by the word and you know like if I see I'm lacking in the area or I need God to help me in this area I apply it with the word and it helps and allow the word to do the work. That's another thing. You got to allow the word to do the work. It's just like when a seed is planted, you don't got to force that seed to grow. You don't got to force that seed to grow um, the proper rain and nutrients and sunlight and all those things with some plants, photosynthesis and different things. It's going to cause the seed to grow and the seed is going to become what it's going to become because it's already inside. It just got to go through the process. So some of you, you really just got to allow the seeds of God and hearing his word and um, listening to his word and reading and declaring his word to do the work. You got to let the word do the work. That makes sense, guys. Okay, so yeah, therefore, let's do 21 through 27. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word. So don't just listen to it and it's not being applied. Right? Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. 
do what it says. So let's like, for example, of the of the Lord, of the word, of the Lord is speaking to you through the word, and the word to you is love your neighbor. Don't just read where it says love your neighbor. Okay, I hear they say love my neighbor, and God told me love my neighbor, but how can you physically go love your neighbor? It could be praying for them. It could be saying hi to them. It could be if they going on a vacation, you watch the house. Not saying you got to go in the house to just make sure, you know, everything's safe around the house. It could be, you know, your neighbor is going through a hard time. Maybe they just lost their wife. Maybe they just lost their dog or their cat. Or they could be going through a rough time and you make them a meal. Or you purchase them a, a cake at Costco or Publix or Walmart or Sam's or wherever. A Kroger's or wherever y'all different people live in different places like Walmart and stuff like that's where I'm at and Sam's and Publix and stuff where many of y'all at too but different people and you just go and you you know you bless them with that cake or you know included with that cake you give them a daily bread or you um give them a fruit basket or give them an encouraging word or a verse up in there or a bible devotional that'll help them or you say you know what God for the next 30 days Two minutes a day or 20 minutes a day, I'm going I'm to pray for my neighbor. I'm going to allow worship to pray in the background for my neighbor. And as I'm playing this worship, God, I ask that, you know, worship begin to fill their heart and their life, God. I ask God that you that this worship just will begin to just break yokes off them and they don't even touch them only, God. Touch their children and their family, God. That's you making that practical. So you didn't just hear the word. You are applying the word. So let's close, guys. So do not merely listen. To, and that could be with anything. That could be with any area. Right? Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. And also, what you may happen for others, God will make happen for you. That's why you got to be mindful of the seeds you sow, whether that be positive or negative. Because the fruit cannot lie. Whatever is planted is going to come up. Just like they say, whatever goes up must come down. Right? That's principles. Like the Bible talk about in Genesis, I believe that's 822. As long as the earth remains, there shall be seed, time, and harvest. Okay, so don't, do not merely listen to the word. Excuse me, guys, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. How you going to forget what you look like in you, you? But this is how it is when people just, they don't take hold of the word. They just listen to it. But you know how some people say, it, it, when I was talking to this person, it seemed like um, it was going in one ear and out the other. Yeah, like that. Okay? So, but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it. He will be blessed in what he does. So basically, you're not doing that in vain. You're going to be blessed for doing that. You're going to be blessed for living by this book of the law, this book of God's word, his governance, his kingdom, his, his rules, his word, his will, his commandments. People say, how can I know the way of God? God's way is in his word. Him and his word and his will are all one. Right? That's just like you have a soul, you are a spirit, you have a soul and you live in a physical body. It don't take away from, this. it's all a part of who you are. So that's like, you want to know God's will for your life, get in God's word, get in relationship with him. I'm hearing this for somebody specifically. How do I know God's will for my life? You pray, you fast, you, you seek him. You act, Just like we talked about earlier, if you lack, lack, lack wisdom, you can ask God who gives generously without finding fault, and it will be given to you. You seek him, and he will show you what you need to see. He will show you his will for your life. He will show you the way in which you should go, and he will do it through his word. Amen? Amen, guys? So... Okay, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, you're not cautious about the words you're speaking and what's coming, you know, things like that. He deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Amen. Amen. Also, blessing the poor. Amen. That's a big one. It could be a person poor in heart that need encouraging work. It could be a, a, per, a poor person on the street that God calls you to bless them with food or finances, however he leads you. 
you know so there's so much more i could say with that but we're going to close bible study guys i thank you guys so much for tuning in and i pray that you guys have a wonderful day